Hey guys, and welcome to this video on the C programming language. So in this video, we're going to create a program that takes a value in base 10 and converts it to any other base. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is create a description for this program. All right, and this will say what the program is going to do. So this program takes a value in base 10 and converts it to any other base. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's include our libraries. So we're going to include stdio.h, and we're going to include our math.h library because it contains the power function or pal function. All right, next, let's set up our main function. So integer main, and then we're going to need to return a integer value. So I'm going to return 0 here. Now let's go ahead and declare um, our function. So uh, we want our function to return the converted number of the number that we input that's in base 10 to some other base. So we want it to return some integer value. And I'm going to call it deck to base. And deck to base is going to take in an integer uh, parameter called base is going to take in an integer parameter called n where base is the base that we want to convert to and the n variable is the number in base 10 that we want to uh, convert to the new base. All right so now I'm just going to copy this. So now we can start writing our uh, function. Well, since we said it returns an integer value, down here we need to return a integer value. So I'm going to return a 0 for now just to make sure our program is set up correctly. But as a matter of fact, we don't want it just to, to return any integer value. We want it to return the converted integer value. So I'm going to create a variable called num, and I'm going to set it equal to 0, and then we're going to return the variable num down here. All right, so now looks like we have everything set up. Let's go ahead and take a look at the algorithm to see how uh, this is going to work. So we said that the variable or parameter n is the number in base 10. And I'm going to set that equal to 4 for our example here. And then the variable base or the parameter base is the base that we want to convert to. All right, so I'm going to choose the uh, base 2, which is also known as binary. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this algorithm is going to work. So we're going to start off with the number 4, and we're going to divide it by the base, which is 2, and this will give us a quotient of 2 and a remainder, I'm going to use R for remainder here, of 0. All right, next we take this new quotient, which is 2, that we just now got. We're going to divide it by the base, and we're going to get a new quotient, 1, with a remainder of 0 as well. Now we take that new quotient, 1, and we're going to divide it by the base, and we get a new quotient of 0 with a remainder of 1. Now here, we know to stop. So we stop when the quotient is 0. Okay, so we're done. Now we know what the number 4 is converted uh, to binary or to base 2. So the number 4 in base 2 or binary is 100. Zero, zero. And we got this number just by taking the remainders and printing them in reverse order. All right. So take a note here. Um, the number 100 is just equal to 1 times 100 plus 0 times 10 plus 0 times 1. Okay? And what you'll also notice, uh, notice here is that we have the remainders here, and they're being multiplied by 10 to some value. So let's go ahead and rewrite this a little bit more. So now we get 1 times 10 to the power of 2 plus 0 times 10 
to the power of 1 plus 0 times 10 to the power of 0. And this is the reason um, that we're going to use our POW or power function um, so we can basically replicate this. Okay, so I think we have everything that we need to really get down and dirty and start programming. So, first thing we're going to need is a uh, variable called quotient. And I'm going to set quotient equal to our number n. Then we're going to need a variable called remainder. And the remainder is going to equal 0 for now. And then we're going to need some variable to iterate our power to. So we, here we had 0, then we had 1, and then we had 2. So I'm just going to create a variable, call it i. And I'm going to set it equal to 0 for now. Okay, we want this, uh, or we want a loop that's going to run while the quotient does not equal zero. Okay. And let's see, we want to get the remainder. And to get the remainder, we can use mod, which is this operator there. So uh, the remainder is going to equal the quotient actually mod it by the base right that's exactly what we had um, well it's not exactly what we had but uh, that's what what we would get if we do 4 uh, mod 2 that would give us a remainder of 0 if we do 2 mod 2 that would give us a remainder of 0 and if we did 1 mod 2 that would give us a remainder of 1 okay so now let's get the quotient so the quotient is going to equal uh, the current quotient. So the new quotient is going to equal the current quotient divided by the base. Okay, and that's exactly what we had here. Um, 4 divided by 2, it gives us a new quotient of 2. And then we do 2 divided by 2, which gives us a new quotient of 1. And we take that new quotient of 1 and divide it by 2. So that's basically um, what we're doing there. All right, so now we're going to need um, to store the remainder. So our num is going to equal the remainder times uh, 10 to the power of i. Well, we can't just write 10 to the power of i like that. So we have to do pow 10 comma i. OK. All right, so now let me just put that down here. Excellent. Our i variable right now is 0, and that's good, but we don't want it to be 0 all the time. We want it to increment each time, like we have up there. So we need i++, plus plus. so it's going to increment by 1 each time. And what we're doing here is basically only one of these. So we need to add them together. So we need to know what the previous uh, value was and then add it to the next one and then add it to the next one. And we can do that simply by saying plus num. So whatever num was previously, we're just adding it to num. So new num equals uh, this whole thing plus the old num. OK, and I think we are now set up to give this a run. So let's go back up to our main function. And I'm going to create an iterative variable. We'll call it i because I want to create a for loop to run through numbers from 0 all the way up to 25. And then we're going to create a variable called base. So we can easily change the base that we want to convert these numbers to. So right now, I choose base 2 like in our example. Now let's go ahead and create our for loop. So we're going to have a for loop that runs from i equals 0, and it's going to run while i is less than or equal to 25, and then i is going to increment by 1 each time. Here we're going to print the decimal number uh, percent %d, so this will be i in base percent %d, so it's whatever our base is. In this case, it's going to be 2 is percent %d. So this is going to be our 
function that does the conversion. And then we're going to want a new line. So I base and then our function, which is deck to base. And we take in the base and I. So we're taking the base and the number that we want to convert from base 10, which is I in this case. And then semicolon. And let's run this. Hopefully we do not get any errors, and we do. All right, so let's see what the error is. Here I put retrun. It should be return. Okay, and let's go ahead and run this again. All right, and now our program seems to work. So I'm not sure if you guys can see this very well, but it says the decimal number one in base two is one, which is true. The decimal number two in base two is one zero, which is true. And the decimal number three in base two is one one. Now let's change the base to maybe eight, just to give an example of a different base. All right, and the number eight in base 8 is 1, 0, which is true, and the number 9 in base 8 is 1, 1, and so on and so forth. So it seems like uh, this program is working as expected. So thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave any questions you have in the comments section. Don't forget to hit that like button, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, please uh, share it. And as always, guys, thank you for watching. Um, I'll be sure to put the code in the description link below. And I'll see you all in the next video.